So here's Gin O'Clock. He's a horse that went to Hong Kong and didn't excel at life there. So basically this hill track we use um, in the first early stages of their preparation, it can be used as a fast track. It's been completely redone. We've got a whole new uh, surface here. Um, it's a 1200 metre track that steadily rises the whole way. And as you can see, he's nice and relaxed. But uh, this is where the steepest part of the gallop is. And he'll be having a nice blow by the top of it. Hey Stace, when we hit the two, just give him a little quicken. The two to the one. <laughs> He was just picking up, so we're sitting on 40 k's an hour. Yeah, right, yeah. You can see he's just getting a slight urge. We're getting up to 50 kilometers an hour. Wow, it's moving, aren't we? They're quite yeah. amazing animals. Yeah. This is one of my favourite gallops on the property. I yep. think it's unbelievable for their fitness. It takes the weight off their fall limbs to get some pairing through their hind quarter puts a really good base on them for their racing preparations. That was lovely work, Stace. Could you go 4-2 on the grass and just come home, Don't, no need to fight her, just happy. Everyone here at Lindsay Park Yarrow, we start at five o'clock in the morning, we muck out the boxes, which generally takes an hour. And then um, everyone's on their first lot at 10 past six, and then it's half an hour a lot from there. And if you're a track rider here at Lindsay Park, you're expected to ride 10 horses. And if it's a busy morning, sometimes 11 or 12, but everyone's out of here by 11 o'clock. How many horses will you guys work this morning? Uh, we'll be working roughly about 180. Montaro in front. Coco, we need to teach you how to settle, so just sit in behind. And then Jabba, um, you're going to have a really nice hit out, so you come from behind and try to catch him. So this door is actually purpose-built glass. Um, it's by design because it's very important to watch a horse through the line. So the finish line's just there. And then uh, we often watch quite intently because there is a tree right up the top there. You can see Jabberwock has nearly made it, and that's called the back me tree. Um, it's just a sign that the horses have handled their work really easily. There's no scientific evidence behind it, but it's just a good guide for us that the horse is fit and ready uh, to go to the races and perform. But the fact that he nearly made it um, shows that he probably needs a trial or two to get himself there. That Limerick lady has just had a liquid sedation. Yeah. Hey Will, how are you mate? Good, how are you? Good buddy. <laughs> so th this property is very unique because what we're able to do, and that's something that's really cool with our bought JD, Will and I, and the whole family, is we're able to build this property from scratch. Yeah. So we started with a blank canvas. Um, Dad planned it. Um, he took all the good things out of Europe, all the good things out of Angerston that worked, and then we're able to put it here. Mm. So. The way this property works is it's a two kilometre trot to the hut. Um, I reckon 80%, 70% of the stable every morning comes past the hut, yep. which is great because that means as trainers, we can always see the horse yeah. and then you get to know your horse. Yeah. We're also a little unique as well as we do our own pre-training. So yeah. a horse arrives to us from day one and we watch it for the first four or five weeks cantering so it can be proactive if we think it's not doing well in the early days, we can either treat or back off or push. Mm. And so the way we've designed it is great. Mm. Um, it flows well, we can work a lot of horses very quickly. So that's, you said when they trot the two kilometers, that's so where they're all stable is way down there, is it? Yeah. Two kilometers away. So they're, they're stabled behind those trees over there. They yeah. come out, they trot up towards us. So you can see here, got yep. a good view of both these horses are both moving well, which is great. Yeah. Come past the hut, we give their work. They go up to the top and then they trot down the hill um, in the middle here. Mm -hmm. And often if a horse is sore, you can actually see them with the extra pressure trotting down right. the hill. You can pull, you know, pick that their lane. Yeah. Um, and then they come past the hut here. They tell us which horses, it, horses they are. Who have we got guys? So we got, uh, I'm on Radiant. Beautiful. Miss. Yep. Are they just canters, guys? Yes. Miracle Miss and Radiant. Yeah, Pro Ride Canters. Pro Ride Canters. As I was saying, as a blank canvas, we're able to make it a warm up without being out of the way. Yeah. So they get out, um, they all have the correct warm up, the correct warm down. Um, 
we've been able to implement water walkers, swimming pools, yeah. treadmills, um, all the other things like that. And it's been working. Yeah. <laughs> we've been able to train lots of winners. Yeah. Um, we had to learn the property. Mm. Uh, and did you, you father purchased it correct yes and was it just it was just a farm wasn't yeah. it had nothing cattle to do farm. with cattle this farm. is this is a yeah. paddock these are unbelievable training assets for us because as you see they go up at an angle yeah. um we use it mainly for slow work or horses recovering or also early in their base work as well so these are also the future because it's getting harder and harder to supply stuff okay. uh, we've spent a lot of money on basically some sports science of working out what is the correct amount of work it's very easy to overwork a horse on here too because you get carried away but um, so in that sense we use it very much as a recovery tool build up their hind quarters get the weight off their fore limbs and uh, it's a very good tool that we use every day and how long are they on there for each session 10 minutes and then you usually cut up 10 minutes apart depending on what stage they're at so um can't give too much away because that's all <laughs> sports science that's all and this is where uh, a lot of the babies come in for their first couple of weeks. It's our biosecurity to make sure that they don't bring any bugs into the main stable, the main population. And as you see, they don't miss anything. We've got two treadmills, we've got a walker, um, we've got quick access to the tracks and there's uh, capacity to have 36 horses here. So it just adds a layer of biosecurity for us, which just helps ensure um, that we're ticking every box. You can never prevent it, but it helps us uh, prevent us hopefully getting a sickness through the main population because it's not very fair for an owner to be paying all the bills up to this stage um, of getting a horse up to the races and then due to our processes their horse gets sick so it can happen but uh, it's a it's a play something that we have in place to stop it regularly occurring yeah so they, all these horses are just into their pre-training so um, we just give them a quick warm up in the sand roll before we head out and start their cantering. So these three have only just been cantering about two weeks. Then after um, they're about to start um, and get back into the main stable. You boys all good? So we just canter them around in here just cause like they can sometimes be a little bit fresh. It's a very safe place for them to get their buck out they're feeling good then when all the riders are happy we go out to the main track you boys good sweet yes so now we're going to go to the small sand track our 600 meter deep sand i was it i watched the first quarter then i went to bed so yeah it sounds like it they it's always a good game richmond carlton um, I was soft spot for both Bulldogs and Carlton to be honest because I still know all the players. So, just want my mates to win. Come on, big boy. So we've got five different tracks to choose from here at Lindsay Park, Yaroa. Um, we've got the 1200 meter hill track which will go up in a minute. Uh, we've got a, a lovely deep sand track which used in combination with a water walker sort of gives the physical benefits of going to the beach minus the uh, fl float trip in between. Um, so we'll head over to the ST now, but it's a track that is mainly used for horses recovery after a gallop. So we've got, usually you would have seen that big grass gallop that we had today. They'll spend the next day in the water walker, the next day on the machine, the next day on the deep sand, and over that 72 hours they'll freshen up beautifully. <laughs> and then they'll be ready for a little bit of 14s. And what's, what exactly is 14s? It's 14 seconds to the furlong, so about three quarter pace. Yeah, so you're starting to get up there then, aren't you? Yeah. So this is the deep sand track. You can see it's just a lovely circle. They, they work Sydney way. Yep. So we don't end up having lopsided athletes, they're working both sides of their body. Yeah, good idea. Um, so on their recovery days they're working the other leg and then they're galloping on their Melbourne leg. And uh, if you turn and face that way, that's actually our 2200 metre long sand. So that's the second variation of the sand track that we have. And they get on here and they can around and it's a, it breaks up the monotonous of a circle. It keeps horses a bit more engaged. So it's just a long straight gallop, is it? Long straight, but then it hooks around and it yeah. finishes up by the, the hut. Yeah, so right. um, 
a benefit of that is that the horses aren't just going in a circle, they can use both sides of their body and then they come past the hut so we get to see them after their slow work as well as just not only seeing them after their fast work. So um, they're two very key slow tracks that we use here at Lindsay Park Yeroa. Are you, do you sort of run the yearling sales kind of stuff, the, the purchasing at the... No, we, we all work together. Um, we've got a good team. Uh, we've got Bloodstock manager Josh Ricks, uh, Tom Ryan. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Dean Hawthorne, who is a great judge. Mm. He's selected a lot of good yearlings that have gone on to be very good horses. And um, obviously, JD, Will, and I have the final call. Yeah. And we have the budget on what we spend. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's basically how it works. Um, I personally like to look at them um, a bit more, um, just so I've got a bit of an idea. Yeah. Um, we know what we like that works at this farm, and we've got certain things that we look for in uh, yearlings. Um, and yeah, we can we can afford to be picky because mm. they're big sales, and you've got lots of options, and it's a long sales se season. Um, sometimes you've got to set budgets and you've got to be strict on yourselves because it's a very easy place to get yeah. carried away. Yeah. Um, the theatre of it can yeah. easily... <laughs> One bid can be $50,000. Yeah. I try making that in a year. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it's you know, we've got to be sensible and we've stuck to our processes and yeah. we've had a lot of success from it. So, we don't want to change it too much because... Um, it's been working. Sometimes you expect them to be cheap and they're very expensive. Mm. And sometimes... Can that happen? You go in and you think a horse might go oh, from yeah. 200 goes to 800? And... Yeah. yeah, get blown out of the water. Yeah. Um, you just put your catalogue on your arm and walk away. As a horse trainer, you become a very good loser. <laughs> a lot of the time you're losing, but um, when you get those small wins, when you feel you got a horse for what was a bargain, yeah. it's always a good feeling. We do spelling here at Lindsay Park Year Old too. Mm -hmm. so what we like about our property and what it was designed for is a one-stop shop so as soon as your horse is bought at a yearling sale or at any point of its uh, education it can come here and stay here so um, we've got spelling obviously the training side of it and that's about all that you need so a lot of horses um, basically with other trainers especially in the metro they don't have the room or the land so they have to send them away but they're constantly under our eye here Right. Which is very, very good. There's a dulcified paddock. Yeah, a couple of the paddocks are named after legends. Yes. Mr. Brightside will get his one, but there is nothing that stops a horse more than naming a paddock or a barn <laughs> after him while they're while still they're running. While they're racing, yeah. Oh, don't do that. Unbelievable. Dulcify is widely considered the best horse Lindsay Park's ever had. Yep. Yep. For sure. The way that he, uh, he's, um, He's always very, very fondly talked about. <laughs> That's how quickly I say. <laughs> well, Colin, you've, uh, you have rubbed shoulders with, uh, with the elite in racing, um, from Her Majesty to Robert Sanks to, to the Shakes, but you also haven't lost the common touch. Let's just finish this by having another look at that super horse Dulcify and maybe his greatest day, the Cox Plate of 1979. Oh, Dulcify let go as race to the lead. Shivery's getting off the fence, but Dulcify's going to have a big lead on it. At the 400, Dulcify shot away two and a half lengths imposing. Then Shivery under the whip from Arbor Shane and Gypsy Kingdom. But Dulcify well clear. Brent Thompson going for his fourth Cox Plate. And he's got it. He's home, Dulcify. He's six lengths in front of Shivery and then Arbor Shane imposing stopping. Dulcify's won by a minute, and that's the way he might win the Melbourne Cup. Dulcify by six lengths to Shivery. Well, I don't think we've ever seen a better performance than that at Mooney Valley on Cox Plate Day. There have been other great champions, but that horse that day was uh, unbeatable, I think. Yes, I have, to, I have to go along with that. And your granddaddy started with nothing, right, and built this all up from yeah, nothing? Yeah, he was a boiler maker in South Australia, and he promised our grandma five years he was going to give it a go, and, um, yeah, the rest is history. He was the first trainer to move training from Metropolitan to the country, so that's where he designed the first property and he really brought the concept of training horses out in the country environment. And uh, he used that philosophy, a happy horse is a good horse. So um, that's what our family's legacy has been built on and we tr keep trying to do it today. So this is our assistant trainer, Eric Broad. Eric, is it? Um, Rich, how are you? How you doing? He's you in going? charge of running the whole mornings and everything and executing. So this is the board. There's a, a rider to groundy and uh, each 
horse gets, as I said before, half an hour on the walker. They get up, brought up here. Up here is bringing Sassy Jenny, who was a winner last start at Mooney Valley. And then Sassy Jenny's going to get saddled. Her rider's coming back, and then she'll go on and go do her work. So Pierre's here, Nora. She's just gone out on the Tonata Sora that we just passed. Why don't you come and get on Sassy Jenny and then go out? So that's sort of how the system of the mornings work. It's busy. Very busy. So we employ about 40 people in the mornings and everyone's got a task and job and they are busy. There's no mucking around. Everything's to time. So if you look up here, everyone sort of has to be bang on time. So a good guide of the morning. 8.15. Where are we? Yeah, we're bang on. She would have pulled out exactly at 10 past eight. So this is the racing office. So this is where all the organisation and planning goes. Um, our Monday meetings, all the trainers, our racing manager, Eric Broad sits in as well, where we debrief all the weekend runners and then plan where they're going to go. And on this whiteboard behind you is every race for the next six weeks in New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. So we... Uh, go and have our heated discussions. Sometimes they're heated, sometimes they're pleasant. And uh, we work out where best place uh, the horse will go next. But um, those discussions are actually good. I think that's what makes us good. And then this is our vet department. So we're very lucky to have our own on-site vet. So if there's any action complaint, the horse will come straight in here, get assessed straight away. And as you can see, this is their task board. So there's quite a few pre-race scopes to do. We always scope a horse before their race just to see if there's any mucus and we'll be able to give them some treatment and or not run. And then we also pull bloods and analyze the bloods and make sure the enzymes and everything's in good order. So after that grass gallop, the horse have come past the hut. They've had that nice little warm down. Uh, 1.8 kilometer, just trot and walk. They'll get their breath back. Because it was a main piece of work, what they'll do is they'll come this way and the strappers will lead them down to the water walker and they'll have 10 minutes just brushing. And it's unbelievable because it gets it's the best recovery tool. It's just like the footballers or AFL players when they finish their uh, games, you see them in the ice baths. So no it's different. what degrees is, is this chilled to? Uh, it's chilled to 10 degrees. Okay. So they've really had a nice cool down now. Um, we've got a full filtration system out the back. So by the end of the morning, because there's been quite a few horses through here, um, it'll be crystal clear um, and absolutely perfect. So this is a really good asset of ours um, that we have on site. So I think it's quite unique to anyone in Australia that we're able to do this. So we affectionately call it the Bogues Water Walker because anything you put in comes out better. <laughs> and uh, it's been a real key to our success. It's also a really good freshening tool. So if a horse is deep into a campaign, we can give it four or five days in a water walker in conjunction with the day paddocks, it really freshes them up because a little bit of our, what we like to pride ourselves on is keeping a horse up for a long time because mm. they are race horses, not spell horses. It's hard to earn prize money in the paddock. So a few of these little tricks and tools that we have can just extend the preparation. Jelly, he's missed his shoe. The Heather's just pointed out he's throwing a shoe in his gallop so the farriers will go see but if you feel that that's beautiful and cold that's exactly what you want to do it's taking any heat and information out of it and he'll recover beautifully from his gallop uh, we've got stabling for 120 horses and then we've got 40 indoor outdoor grids and then we've got 36 boxes down at criterion which is our biosecurity place so we've got good capacity and we're able to flick a horse around. So a big key of training, as I said before, is training them off the feed bin. Sometimes a horse in a box won't eat as well as if they're in the grid. It's just working it. They're all individuals. That's mainly Eric and Will's job is to get the horses eating. And yeah. it's really improved over the last couple of years. We've been very happy with the way that it's going and um, just utilizing the different stabling that we have here. Um, just getting the horses eating and then therefore getting them racing better. So this is our pool. Uh, this is a very important piece of equipment that we use. Um, we either warm a horse up, so if they're a bit naughty on the walker or they're not quite freeing up on the walker, they can do a lap of the pool first and then go get ridden. If they're a little bit on fat camp and they need to do a bit of extra exercise after their cantering, especially in their first bit of 
in their first six weeks of work, they'll do a lap after their work. Okay. And then, so it's quite hard on them, is it, doing a full lap? They have yeah, to work swimming, hard. they have to really get through. They can't touch the bottom, they have to really... Oh, so this is actually swimming, it's not. It's different to the water walk. Yeah, yeah so okay. this is swimming, so they can't touch the bottom. Uh -huh. And then everything in the afternoon basically swims, especially in the warmer months. So this is a really important tool for us. And the beautiful, beautiful thing actually about having a circle is that you can do a couple continuous laps. So for the stayers, they might do two or three laps. And it's a really good workout without putting any stress through their bones. Have you ever fallen in? Quite a few times. <laughs> and then you make the mistake of swimming to the middle and it's too far to jump back out. So you have to jump back in and get out. Rookie error swimming to the middle. <laughs> Every morning, uh, we get here about two o'clock in the morning. Wow. And we do uh, what they call, they get a first hay in the morning first. About two o'clock, the whole place gets one biscuit loosened. Okay. And then we go around and then they get what they call, they get PM hay. So every horse, the ones who are not up to evens, they all get PM hay at night. And uh, Will will go around, or Eric, about four o'clock. And what they call, they get an early dipper. Okay. Is that a first dipper before they work. Nice. And then about 7.30, quarter to eight, they get the remainder of their feed and no problem all the horses eating. Yeah. And, and the system, the way the system's designed, it does work. Yeah. Because what they do is they get the loosen in the morning, so they eat the loosen, it creates saliva, it lines their gut before they work. And it's a huge part of making horses go fast nutrition, right? Yeah. yeah. And then our levers to the amount of horses we've got is very minimal. Yeah. And then we come back about two o'clock and we do a full feed up. Okay. Yeah. Two o'clock. And is that the last time they eat for the afternoon? Yeah, they get fed from three up till we finish feeding the whole lot. What time's that? About half past four. Yeah, four big day for you. Uh, a little. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. enjoy it. And you hear everyone in, in racing, especially training, saying that it's really hard to get staff. Do you guys find it hard? Yeah, certain times of the year. Yeah. Um, at the moment, we're good, yeah. but that can change really quickly. You know, it's riding horses isn't exactly, yeah. you know, injuries happen. Yeah. Riders fall off and you can have those mornings where two riders fall and hurt themselves and then the next day you're short. Yeah. Um, it was hard through COVID. Yeah, because you uh, lost a lot of the overseas. Yeah, they yeah. went home, which is understandable. And yeah. um, now it's, it's, it's okay. Like yeah. we're, we're pretty well staffed now. It's something we really focus on. Um, we have forecasts and when people are leaving, because when you get low staff, all it does is cause stress on your staff at the stable. Yeah. And then they start doing more and more and then they get tired. So yeah. it's very important to keep your property well staffed and keep your staff happy because yeah. happy staff equals happy horses yeah. equals good results. Yeah. Um, so it's something you try work on and sometimes it's unavoidable. Yeah. Um, you know, people... It's a high turnover industry. Mm. People don't last, a, a lot of people don't last a long time, mm. uh, especially riding. You know, once you get to a bit older, mm. your body starts to hurt a bit more. Yeah. And what about your, um, fatigue? Like, how do you deal with fatigue yourself? Are you up early a lot and long days? Yeah. So it's luckily we're manageable here. So in winter, our staff don't start to six. Yeah. So that's, that's good. Big it's difference. Nice. So they'd all yeah. be they can sleep into like at least five or even later. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's important, you yeah. know. And we do have separate shifts here. So we have a morning shift and an afternoon shift. So morning shift only works to eleven, twelve o'clock, then yeah. they're done for the day. So a lot of the staff that work here have two jobs. Yeah. And they go do their second job as well. So right. they can earn good money. Yeah. Um and yeah, so that's how we kinda we have split shifts, so people aren't working full days. Yes. Um, they still get their hours and they still get nice pay. Um, and with us, we've got three trainers. So yeah. if one of us is feeling under the weather like me at the moment, yeah. <laughs> got a bit of a sinus infection, yeah. um, you know, he can just come in at six um, and then one of us comes in at five. Yeah. But everyone at this time of year starts at five o'clock, everyone. So. Right. Five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And would it, you wouldn't be able to run this operation at the scale it is without the three of you and then also your sister as well. Is that right? Like it'd be too big for one person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I think it's a direction that all training 
yeah. partnerships are going. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll see a lot of the top trainers have one or two names to it. Um, I think it's just because this industry now is a 20, 360, the only race, don't race in one day. And I think that's Christmas, Christmas day. day yeah. So. Um, horses need to be looked after. Mm. Uh, they can't have a day off like us. Yeah. And, and do you get um, a day off? Yeah, we work yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, now there's three of us in the partnership, you know, we can have nice holidays. I can have yeah. two, three weeks off and yeah. not feel guilty. Yeah. Um, you just got married, right? Yes. Yeah. I did, did you get, <laughs> get a honeymoon? Uh, yeah. I had, yeah, I had five days off. It's, it's not bad. But yeah. it was a bad time of year because, um, you know, with sales and everything. Yeah. So. We'll try have a honeymoon June, July, the okay, quiet season. Can you um, go somewhere nice, Europe or something? Yeah, I think Excellent. so. We'll, we'll try go somewhere and... Um, go to those beaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just reset because it's a 20, it's a full on business. You're yeah. still working. Sometimes you get calls late at night. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, you got to manage it. And we've got three in the group, yeah. Will, JD and I, and yeah. it's very manageable, which is yeah. good. And how often do you speak to your old man? about the business and everything that's going on? Um, he more rings in about his horses here. Uh -huh. um, he actually uh, stays out of it a bit now. Yeah. Um, I think he trusts us boys. Yeah. We have our processes and it's working. Horses are getting mm. to the track and running well. Where we do use dad is when we have to make a real difficult decision with a good horse, mm -hmm. which races and we really bounce ideas off him and he can he knows the program off the back of his head yeah. um and you know he can help us think differently and um yeah different different ways of thinking and um you know he's a hall of fame horse trainer so it'd be yeah. crazy not to ask him um but he it, it is very hard for him too because he actually doesn't know the horses he yeah. can't see them but we can give him as good a picture as we can um but that's where he's very useful and then he's very useful when us three trainers can't. <laughs> yeah, can't <laughs> agree. <laughs> if we have a very different opinion, which can happen. Yeah. Um, Dad's normally the, uh, you know, the adjudicator. Yeah. Um, but I find now there's three of us, generally two agree. Yeah. And so one, so it doesn't actually get to Dad as much these yeah. days because there's three in the group, um, and. It's yeah. good. It's healthy. Makes you think. Um, makes you think different. You just don't get your own way the whole time, mm. and you need to justify mm. why you want to do it. Mm. So it's actually very healthy. Have you thought much about how life's going to change when you become a dad? Yeah, I went to the baby expo and we worked through one aisle, and it cost two and a half grand. So <laughs> um, no, looking forward to the challenge. It's the best thing about it is actually Will's got one due. We're three weeks apart, so we'll be able to tackle it to together hand in hand and yeah it's uh, it's going to be an interesting challenge ahead they say um a new father or a new young couple they're the hungriest people because you need to it. sit up so and there's that really famous quote quote that csa's was a visionary came to racing with nothing but dreams and do you have a racing dream do you is there something that you have to achieve over your career i'd love to me and my brothers and everyone here at lindsay park we'd love to start winning premierships again yep um the Ma is a fair way ahead, so we've got quite a bit of work to do, but that would be a lovely goal in the future. And me personally, I'd love to train in Hong Kong, um, oh. hopefully one day take over from the old man. So I'd love to go over there and test test uh, my art against the world's best. Yeah. Is there a race on the world calendar that you really want to win or the Australian calendar that's the one you really want the most? Cox Plate. Love yeah. to go an inch better. <laughs> And the Melbourne Cup would be nice Melbourne too, Cup. but I'm not, not trying to be too greedy. And what about on the world stage? Dubai World Cup, I reckon, yeah. would be pretty special. And maybe a, a nice race at Royal Ascot, but yeah. again, don't want to be too greedy. Bright, take Brightside for Queen Anne. <laughs> has, that, has that ever even been talked about? Uh, it hasn't been floated yet. Okay. <laughs> to, be, to be confirmed. You were too young to remember your grandfather, were you? Or? Uh, I was very young. Yeah. He passed away. I was... I think I was five. Yeah. Um, but I do remember him. Yeah. Like, I didn't know he was a horse trainer, though. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I remembered it, him as Pa. Um, he used to play jelly bean game with us. Um, yeah. Had to pick the jelly bean. I'd yeah. never lose. Yeah. <laughs> also, I thought. Um, and that's, yeah, basically how I remember it. Yeah. I remember when he was very sick. 
Yeah. Because um, he died reasonably young, right? For he, he did, his yeah. late 60s, was it? I think he had the first ever triple heart bypass in Australia. Yeah. So he, he just had a lot of health issues. Yeah. Um, but he was tough and, yeah, I got good memories, but not, not mm. as a trainer. I yeah. wish I could ask him questions now. Yeah, it would be brilliant, wouldn't yeah. it? And do you look back at his legacy quite a bit and watch the old videos and stuff? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. History is always fun to watch. Yeah. I love watching uh, all the old videos and pointing out all our old champion horses. So, yeah, it's something us boys don't take for granted. Yeah. And when did you decide that you wanted to be a trainer? Well, as a young kid, I wanted to be an AFL player. Yeah. Quickly worked out I wasn't good <laughs> enough. And I wasn't very good at school. Yeah. <laughs> Got dyslexia. Um, and I didn't concentrate. I just love my sport and I love animals. And luckily enough, my old man was a horse trainer. Yeah. Got to work with animals every morning. Um, I enjoyed it and it just kind of went from there. It happened naturally. Dad never really pushed us into it because he's always said it's a industry. Once you're in, you're in. Yeah. And it's, it's not your job, it's your life. Yeah. And, and it is that for you, isn't it? It's your oh, life. Yeah. yeah. Literally yeah. horses, yeah, like all day, like, seven. Yeah. yeah, all day today you'll be all just horses, yeah. horses, horses. Yeah. And you're always thinking about your horses, like you're worrying about them or thinking where you're going to place them, um, when you're going to bring them in to mm. start their new campaigns. Um, yeah, it's training's 24-7 and I think every trainer will tell you that. And did you feel the pressure when your dad kind of left and it was really just yeah. you and... Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, it was a lot of change. Um, horses, you know, will people didn't know if we could train, yeah. and some a lot of people moved their horses because they just wanted to see what happens. And luckily, we're lucky, uh, we got a couple really good horses that went mm. through the grades and were able to get results quite quickly. And um, that's but the rest is history, I don't yeah. need to go on about it, yeah. Um, you know, we're second on the premiership at the moment behind the biggest trainers in Australia, yeah. Kieran Ma and Dave Eustace. Um, and we're hungry and we want to succeed. And yeah. that's what we're, you know, we're probably at the point where we're nearly um, at capacity here. Yeah. And uh, we can hopefully be competitive with all the top trainers. And that's where Lindsay Park, through its whole history, has been right at the top. And we want to stay there. Yeah, and you've got that mantra, which is you'd leave the jersey in a better place than you found it, right? Yeah. Because even though, you know, Lindsay Park is your family, but you still feel that you're just sort of the custodians of it. And you're Correct. Hopefully it's, you're here forever, but... It's a brand mm. um, that's been around for a very, very long time, and, you know, we're the representation, so we try, you know, mm. it's got a really good... Um, history uh we've been very very successful won multiple trainers premierships um being competitive in all the group ones so yeah. that's how we want to keep it and you know we got very close this year yeah I still think mr brightside won of yeah cox i said that to jd you boys know what it's like to win a cox plate yeah you... <laughs> good 45 seconds yeah. it was I mean, it was yeah. the worst photo i've ever seen in my oh. life um and everyone i talk to thinks he won so yeah conspiracy theories yeah, yeah in that. out of the race has been great so uh, and we know we got one of the best horses in Australia and hopefully he can show that this autumn. This is the office so this is uh, all Uncle Pete and summer CS's trophies and we go into here and this is a blend between dad eyes and CS's when I say I Ben Will and I yeah so it's a Memsey Doncaster Maccabi Diva all-star mold love another one of them Maybe tomorrow. Uh, Melbourne Cups. Melbourne Cups yeah. Brilliant. It's pretty full. Wouldn't mind another day like this one. Um, Dad had a world record six winners on Derby Day. What's your best record on a Derby Day? 
I don't think we've even drained a winner on Derby Day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then here is a bit of a, this is the time walk I was talking about. So these are- The walk of fame. Classic winners, group one winners, trained by anyone who's ever held the license here at Lindsay Park. So a lot of good horses. Through. So there's Elvis there. He's straight from Woods. Oh man. <laughs> Everyone looks younger there. Look at Simon O'Donnell. Miss Finland, she went all right. Jeanne. Rewaya. Rewaya, I remember. Nadine. Nikoni, gone on to be a brilliant sire. So all the staff parties and shenanigans go on in here. So if Mr. Brightside was to win tomorrow, what would be happening here tomorrow night? Uh, no, it wouldn't happen tomorrow night. We save it up for, uh, because I'll be stuck in Melbourne. But if he if he was to win a big race, it'll give us a reason to come up here. Um, yeah, it'll be happening in here. Open it up. And yeah, so get the fire comes. going. How good. And uh, yeah, a bit of pool, some nice cold beers. And yeah, and a big gong for attracting attention. <laughs> Bed Loosen Up was obviously a horse that's actually been likened to Mr. Brightside. That's him winning the Cox Plate there. He was a remarkable horse for Dad. Actually, at the same age, Dad had Mr. Better Loosen Up, we've got Mr. Brightside. Yeah. And then if you walk uh, along, all the memorabilia is to CS. So all his amazing winners and triumphs, like that picture over there is when he had 10 winners in a day, which is just mind boggling. And how often do you all get in here and have a good night? Uh, we... Give it a nudge. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably not as much as we should. Yeah. Um, but it is awfully tempting. It's good. It's a really nice place to just sit and have a drink. Yeah. Get away from it all. But if you close your eyes, it Um, Bold Bastille, they've been backing it since the market went up on Wednesday. How's she looking and what's Mark Zara thinking? She's paraded beautiful. Mark's very confident. Um, the plan is just to don't take away her natural ability of great gate speed, so she'll be right there and then just assess. He says there's a fair bit of water on the track, uh, so the inside's starting to chop out, which is actually good for bright side later in the day. Um, but yeah, we're, we're very confident and hopefully it all goes according to plan. Let's go get them. Let's go get them. She missed. 800 from home. Bold Bastille held the lead. Out deeper, Immortal Star. Bold Bastille go, with 250 go, metres go. to go. She sprints and she's two and a half lengths. Yes, Lulu. Up on the inside, Command. She missed and then Immortal Star. Bold Bastille, 100 metres to go with an excellent turn of foot. She's just going to be a bit too fast for them. And Bold Bastille leads down one wheel. to be get saddled up, see what the atmosphere is like. I'm excited. The track's playing well for his style of running. It's all on. Let's go. So, how have you been, Mr. Brightside Strapper, for most of his starts? Ah, uh, yeah, pretty much everything. Yeah, yeah. And not his. Haven't done not his three Sydney runs, and there was one in COVID I couldn't do. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he just keeps getting better, doesn't he? Sure does. Yeah. And how are you feeling today? How's he feeling today? Ah, uh, super. Yeah. Bouncing out of his skin this morning, so. Yeah. Could not be happier. Is there any kind of sign that he makes to, to let you know that he knows it's race day? Um, not really. Once we get here, he's pretty switched on, but he's naturally very laid back, so makes the job very easy and yeah, yeah. goes out and does his best every time, so you can't fault him. Yes, yeah, so he's always always very relaxed yeah, during the day. Yeah, yeah, he seems that way, doesn't he? That's it. Yeah, even the media came to saw him yesterday and they couldn't believe how quiet he was. So. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of the race, like if you had a bit of a look at the way the race looks like it's going to pan out and stuff? Uh, yeah, there's going to be mad speed, yeah. uh, which I think is only going to suit him. Obviously the barrier is a bit sticky, but uh, he'll find a spot and then they'll spread out and I think his class will get him across the line. Yeah, just like in the Futurity, it was amazing that when he accelerated the Futurity, that was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's probably one thing throughout his whole career, he's got a devastating turn of foot that no one really thinks he does have. He yeah. sort of goes under the radar. Like, yeah. I think there's only been once that a horse has ever come from behind him and run past him, so 
and yeah, that will to win that he has when something comes near him, yeah, he can't put that in any other horse. And do you do much with him during the week outside of this? Uh, if he's at Flemington, yeah. I'll do, yeah, get him ready for his rider every day and yeah, spend all the time with him. So normally if he has a two weeks between runs, he'll stay at Flemington. If it's any longer than that, he normally goes back to Euroa. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the last three weeks he's been at Euroa. But yeah, everyone's done an amazing job with him. He looks an absolute picture. He's very, very fit, so it's up to him now. Yeah. Do you remember when Mr. Brightside was offered for sale for shares and stuff? Yeah, I can remember the day. Yeah. Um, message came through to uh, our Bloodsock manager at that stage, um, Jason Timpley, got the email from Wayne Orman. Yeah. We uh, remember uh, we were in the office and we had a quick, quick search and watched the replay and we were like, oh, yeah, we need to. I reckon we'll be able to sell this horse. Fifty to go and Melodious ranged up on the outside of Enduan. Coming after them like a boss. Wider out, oh so savvy. Lady Talina in behind these. Then followed by Mr. Brightside. A Combella fee is starting to weave its way through. Is coming after them. A big chance here at the 100 metres. Combella fee over on the inside. Out wide like a boss and running on also oh so savvy and sort of war. But Combella fee, gee, that was a great effort. Combella fee won it. Photo Quickly on yeah, it. Yeah, so we got him done. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. when so they so Blood Sock Agents sort of offer it to you and say, Hey, we've got this horse, we think it's got potential, yeah. do you guys want it and, and then what do you guys take the whole lot and then it's on you? They guys. Off, they said uh, if we do sixty percent of him, uh, he can come to us. So okay. really? we yeah. did a quick email up for our owner uh, database, sent it out and I think within twenty or thirty minutes uh, we had we had wow. people going on the emergency list. And then, was it, is it unusual for a horse to sell out that quickly? Was there something about him that sort of stuck out? Uh, we've found sort of those New Zealand horses, they do sell pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was obviously the visual of that replay was yeah. very impressive. Yeah. And he was a, a valuable price, I guess you would say. So probably 200 Aussie landed. So. Yeah, it's great. And how are you feeling? How are the nerves today? Do you get nervous on days like today? Uh, you do get nervous, yeah. yeah. I mean, excited, I think. Yeah. Also. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You think he'll win? Uh, yeah, confident, but you yeah. never know with a, in a horse race. So, yeah. But uh, he's in great order. It's a grand final for all of them, so they're all going to be ready to go, rock up. Yeah, know, yeah, everyone's, everyone's trying today. Yeah, and the track seems to be playing uh, sort of well for him, right? Yeah, yeah, I think sort of he'll be coming down the middle of the track. Well, the years start coming and they don't stop coming Fed to the rules and I hit the ground running Didn't make sense not to live for fun Your brain gets smart but your head gets dumb So much to do, so much to see So what's wrong with taking the back streets? You'll never know if you don't go You'll never shine if you don't glow Hey now, you're an all-star Get your game on, go play Hey now, you're a rock star Get the show on, get paid It's the fruition of a pretty long plan, right? Yes. No, it basically got put in place as soon as he and um, second on championship day. This is what we wanted to win. Good prize money on offer and couldn't be happy with the way that he settled up. He's a, he's a thing that's remarkable about him is consistency and his professionalism is I'm more nervous than him, which is Yeah, you can I can tell. Do you normally get nervous? No, I just barrier eleven, it's gonna be interesting. Yes. We need a lot of luck because he's gonna if we don't get the luck, he'll just if they don't string out. He's going to be post and he's going to have to do it tough, but he's, he is ready for a tough more. Um, he's stirred up for three weeks between runs, he pulled the work into him so he can cop it. Yeah. So he's going to be really tested today? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Good luck, thank you. Let's go! How are you feeling? Your brother's pretty nervous. Yeah, well, I think we're both nervous. Uh, we believe in this horse, he's never let us down, so yep. um, the way the track's playing has given us a little bit of confidence. I yeah. think it's playing very even and they are making ground for the fine, especially that last race. So, look, we're very happy with him. He's settled up like he always does. Yeah, it looks very relaxed. He's switched on. So, yeah. um, looking forward to seeing what happens. It's going to be an Thank interesting you. race to watch. It's going to be a lot of speed by the looks of it on paper. You know, sometimes they say there's going to be a lot of speed and they go slow. So, mm. yeah, strange things happen in these kind of races. So, uh, yeah. I'll be relieved when it's over. It's yeah. a long week. We yeah. call it Mr. B week. This is our routine, yeah. Um, what do you think? Well, I think you, you bang him out of the gates as best as possible, like always what we do. He'll decide where to go. More than likely, you won't be as in a controlling role with these horses. Yeah. 
I'm not happy to find that. You know, more than likely we midfield very, very many times. If we get the first half right, we'll be fine the last half. Yeah. yeah. Your track's playing nicely. So well, it's exactly. It's not. It's, it's, it's not like you can't make ground on them. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really important. I think you, you'll, you'll find they'll, they'll come out look at that. The only thing I want to say with um, if it's all right, Ben, like just remember if you slow away like you can, just go Plan B. And yep. Just bang. go trust the horse, don't we? Yep. You're on the best horse. Enjoy. Perfect. Star Mile 6 about to get underway. And they're racing. And Puncture anticipated the start and got a flyer early, the Kiwi, with a tractable the inside. Pride of Jenny is pushing up. Ayrton isn't too far away. And where's Buffalo River at this stage? About seventh and looking to force forward. Pride of Jenny using plenty of the track. A length and a half, Holy Mans and Puntura. They were followed by midfield. Dom to shoot three wide around Ayrton Pinstripe. A length, Mr. Brightside, who's third last. Dragged back from gate 11. Two and a half lengths, Munamek and Cascadian last. Pride of Jenny, they've run it hard. 850 metres to go by two lengths to Buffalo River, a brutal tempo. Three further back, attractable, a length and a quarter, Desert Lightning niggled at. They were followed by Holy Man's Puntura. Then Dom came to Dom Deschutes, pinstriped Ayrton. Mr. Brightside would be at least 15 off the lead, maybe 20. So it's Pride of Jenny coming up towards the corner at the 400 metres. Two lengths in front from in second place, Buffalo River in its slipstream. Four lengths away, Holy Man's, and then Come came on, attractable Brody. pinstripe. Mr. Brightside brought to the outside, seven or eight off Pride of Jenny, who still paddles in front, but we know she go, keeps going at the 200, Pride of Jenny three lengths Buffalo River, now Mr Brightside and Cascadian coming but it's still Pride of Jenny, a hundred to go, there's no stopping her what a performance, Pride of Jenny wins by two lengths Mr Brightside Cascadian. No good mate that's the, that's the great game though isn't it That's the thing about Barry's isn't it but, um, yeah. look the horse has got enormous um, ideally, we'd love to have rolled forward and been within striking distance, but I don't think he could have seen the lead at the top of the straight and he closed up brilliantly. The horse yes. has lost no admirers. He's yeah. unbelievable. Right, really. He tries so hard for you, doesn't he? And he'll, uh, I'm sure he'll get his redemption in the Australian Cup. Yeah, he'll, he'll go real good in that. Can't wait to watch that. But um, thank you so much. You've been so good to us and everyone else who's watched this. You've given so much insight. People will really enjoy it. So I really appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Onward and upward. Thank you, brother. Happy days. But it's just the